Hi everyone, my name is Chen, and I am a student in Brown University's 2013 Phage Hunters class. My class focused on alignment-free methods of analyzing intermycobacteriophage relationships. Here's a bit of background. Thanks to the advent of high-throughput sequencing in the early 2000s, we now have enormous quantities of whole genome sequences in a multitude of organisms. Pioneering approaches to intergenomic analysis of this data relied on sequence alignment. These alignment-based techniques work well, but they're time-consuming, often requiring both intensive computation and manual gene annotation. And they can falter when there's a high rate of horizontal gene transfer, which, as Dr. Hatfield discussed on Friday, is a characteristic prevalent in mycobacteriophage. Our analysis instead relied on examining usage of tetranucleotides, four nucleotide subsequences, in phage genomes. More generally, this is a form of alignment-free sequence analysis based on KMER analysis. We opted for a KMER length of 4 because that gives you enough granularity to represent the uniqueness of a phage while still retaining enough points of comparison between phage and your corpus. However, we note that many of our results are repeatable for increased oglionucleotide length. To begin, we calculated tetranucleotide usage departures from expectations, or TUD, values for each genome. Essentially, this is the normalized frequency of all 256 possible tetranucleotides within a sequence. This gives us a quantifiable metric we can use to compare phage relatedness. To calculate TUD, we counted the observed frequency of a given tetranucleotide within our genome. We then divide this value by that tetranucleotide's expected frequency, given a genome with the same composition but with random nucleotide order. A detailed overview of this procedure is available in a paper published by David Pride in BMC Genomics in 2006. We repeat this procedure for all 256 possible tetranucleotides. The final TUD of each genome is the vector constituting all 256 tetranucleotide deviations. We now want to use this TUD calculation to build phylogenetic trees. This is the crux of alignment-free genomic analysis, being able to infer interphage relationships without having to examine genes. We can compare TUD vectors by calculating the Euclidean distance between two TUDs. To form a tree, we sequentially join phages together by finding the pairwise comparison of the smallest distance in the matrix, recursively joining together nodes with the lowest distance values. We constructed a tree in this manner of the 60 phages used for the alignment-based tree in Graham Hatful's 2010 Comparative Phage Genomics paper. I'll note that this calculation process took only seconds on a personal computer, as opposed to the entire day on a compute cluster that our tree based on pairwise global sequence alignment took. This is what resulted. So the first thing that jumped out to us was that almost all phage were accurately paired with their subcluster. Even singletons remain distinct, being separated out from the rest of the phage. Not only that, but subclusters of the same parent cluster also tended to group together. You can see here that cluster A subclusters are in the same general region of the tree, as are subclusters of clusters C, F, and H. This also meant that our alignment-free tree corresponds closely with the alignment base tree in Hatful et al. In particular, you can note the similar geometry with cluster C and cluster F. We did note, however, one particular discrepancy. Subcluster B3 was not grouped with other cluster B subclusters, but instead with cluster A subclusters. Wanting to find out more, we performed further analysis on the subcluster. We examined TUD histograms and found that B3 phages exhibit a marked increase in the normalized frequency of the tetranucleotide GATC. Here's a graph comparing mean frequency of B3 subcluster phages versus B2 and B1 subcluster phages. As you can see, the increase is genome-wide. The tetranucleotide GATC is of particular note because it's an inverted repeat palindrome, meaning that a double-stranded genome containing it may easily be cut by a restriction enzyme with the corresponding recognition site. As it happens, the recognition site of BAMH1, a rather well-known endonuclease, is GGATCC. When we examined the relative frequency of GGATCC in B3 versus other subclusters, we found that B3 phages contain significantly more GGATCC than any other subcluster. 
This seems counterintuitive, since it follows that the bacteriophage would prefer that their genome not be cut up by restriction enzymes. Discerning the cause of exactly why, then, this overrepresentation occurs is beyond the scope of this project, but it's certainly something we would like to look at in the future. On a higher level, however, this highlights the power of alignment-free techniques in providing an overview of genomes, allowing anomalies and trends to be easily spotted. Indeed, our review of TUD histograms revealed many more interesting distributions and irregularities that may become the subject of future study. We also wanted to see if we could assign an unknown genome to a cluster using just TUD and pre-existing semantic cluster information. We did so by calculating the TUD of the unknown genome and finding the nearest neighbor of the unknown phage by TUD distance. We used a program called Weka to do the actual computation. Given a database of phage TUDs and cluster information, Weka takes in an unknown TUD and classifies it into a cluster. Weka also allowed us to do tenfold cross-validation of the reliability of our method. This involves splitting out 10% of our phages from our database and running a nearest neighbor classifier of these phages against the remaining 90% in the database. This process is repeated 10 times, each time withholding a different 10% for testing. From this tenfold cross-validation, we saw that when singletons were excluded, subcluster assignments were recovered with a frequency of 98%. We also used TUD values to examine intragenomic differences, how much a particular segment of a genome varies from a genome as a whole. We accomplished this by computing a tetranucleotide difference index in a sliding window of 2,500 base pairs across the genome. TDI is an index of genomic self-similarity. Higher values indicate windows that are different from the mean in terms of TUD composition. To find significantly different windows, we plotted the z-score of this value, which takes into account how variable a genome is overall. Here are some examples of TDI calculated for representative phage of each cluster. We notice in particular a spike in TDI towards the tail end of cluster L phages. These kinds of TDI spikes might be illustrative of horizontal gene transfer, since it follows that a particular area of a phage genome that is consistently different from the rest of the genome, in terms of TDI at least, might come from other phages. So to investigate this kind of spike in cluster L, we perform nucleotide and protein blast searches in this region of Joe Dirt, a representative cluster L1 phage. Gene product 130 shows some interesting homology with a protein from Mycobacterium obsessus, a water contaminating relative of Mycobacterium smegmatis. Despite some protein homology, it's likely that the spike in TDI at the end of cluster L genomes is not driven by horizontal gene transfer. We investigated the final portion of Joe Dirt's genome with other bioinformatics tools, such as RepVind, and found this section contained significantly elevated counts of repetitive camers. If a genomic section is repetitive, certain tetranucleotides will be seen more frequently and others will be repressed. It's likely that the repetitiveness in this region, found in all cluster L phages, is driving the spike in TDI. A more sophisticated method of detecting horizontal gene transfer is by using naive Bayes classifiers. Essentially, this is a way to calculate the probability that a given genome is the origin of a given subsequence. If we calculate such a probability for all genomes in our corpus, we can quantify the likelihood that a given genome segment originated from some other genome. We think this is a viable alternative for not only detecting, but identifying the origin of horizontal gene transfer in an alignment-free manner, and will focus future research towards this area. As mentioned earlier, another area we would like to focus on further is investigating the GGATCC overrepresentation in B3 and identifying potential reasons behind such a pattern. Finally, previous research has shown that hosts and parasites tend to have similar tetranucleotide usage patterns. As such, investigating bacteriophage relationships using alignment-free techniques could prove to be fruitful. Our research focused on tetranucleotide usage metrics in mycobacteriophage and what we can infer and interpret from these statistics. Our ability to construct neighbor joining trees, classify phages, and identify areas of further research demonstrate the power of alignment-free techniques in detecting high-level genomic trends, as well as providing a fast and accurate way of classifying intragenomic relationships. Well, that's all I've got for now. 
I would like to note that a copy of this presentation is available at yeezus.com slash tango SCA, and that we're open source. All our data, programs, and the resources used to create this presentation are available at github.com slash bcyranosian slash tango. Finally, we are grateful to Dr. Peter Shank, Dr. Soren Israel, Dr. Jean Wu, HHMI's SEA program, and the University of Pittsburgh. I would personally like to thank my instructor, Sarah Taylor, and the TA who made all of this possible, Ben Cyranosian, as well as my fellow classmates, Emma Harold and Eddie Williams.